Roll for Crit is made possible thanks to the support of viewers like you and our patrons on our Patreon page. You can become a patron for just $1 a month at patreon.com slash roll for crit. Roll for Crit here to bring you our review of For Glory, a game of gladiatorial combat for two players. You will be recruiting gladiators and building up your own personal deck before heading into the arena to have them duke it out with each other in an attempt to gain the most glory. That's right. You are all gladiatorial schools, and you are trying to show that you're the best school by being the first one to gain six glory. Now, before you head to the arena and gain that glory, you're going to have to build up your resources in the machination phase. This is where the deck building part really comes in. The way it works is you will have coins, either gaining coin tokens or coin cards to buy from the three lineups. There will be three separate decks, each one containing cards of a different type. The first one we'll go over is tactics. These tactic cards are going to be used during the arena phase when you're actually fighting. They're things like dodging or parrying, so on and so forth. And during the machination phase, don't really do anything but you can reserve them so they're there for you during the arena phase. What you do is after you buy them and redraw them, you will put them off to this side of the board over here where it says reserve. They'll be face down so your opponent doesn't know what you reserved. And at any time, probably during the arena phase, you can buy back every card there. You can't pick and choose. So if you had five cards there, you have to spend five gold. Once again, either from cards in hand or the gold tokens you'll earn throughout the game. The next deck you buy from are schemes, patrons, and some income cards. You can probably guess what income cards are. They give you more gold. Now, patrons are important because they usually give you influence. Influence is what you'll need to play gladiators because gladiators will have different influence costs. You can't have more gladiators in all three arenas than you have influence. So for example, if you have two cards that give influence in your villa, that's where you're gonna place most of these patrons, then you can have up to two influence worth of gladiators. So be very careful about making sure you balance that. Finally, schemes are cards that you'll play usually during the machinations phase. They will be one-time effects and then go into your discard pile. Finally, let's get to those gladiators. These guys are really important because, well, that's how you're going to actually win the game. When you draw a gladiator after buying one, you will place them into one of these three arenas. Two of them are your fleeting glory arenas, while the one on the very end is your lasting glory arena. We'll talk a little bit later about the difference between all these arenas are, but what you need to know is that when you place a gladiator in there, one, make sure that you have the right amount of influence in order to keep these gladiators out. Two, be aware that they're going to be the thing that triggers you to enter the arena phase. One of the two players will always have this helmet piece, which is known as the crowd's favor. Uh, they may have this from the start of the game for going second or later on for having fewer glory than the other player. And it's at the end of that player's turn that they check to see if the arena phase is triggered. This is based on this number in the corner of all the gladiators cards, which is their bloodlust. If the total sum of all the bloodlust on all the gladiators that are at the arenas currently adds up to or exceeds the number at the top of this stack over here, the boast card pile, then the arena phase begins. As the game goes on, that number will go higher, so it's going to take longer and longer. You'll have more time to build up in between each phase. When you go into the arena phase, you're gonna take a look at which arenas are in play. There's going to be one lasting glory and one fleeting glory. As soon as gladiators are added to one of those fleeting ones, the other one is off limits. So you're only gonna have two fights each arena phase. If you don't have any gladiators at an arena, or if you don't have as many as you'd like, you have the chance to do late registration now before the fight starts. If you have one in your hand, you can spend three coins to play it to the arena in question. Also, you can now, as you can at any time, spend money to get your reserve back in your hand if you want some extra cards to juice you up. Next is when you're gonna look at your gladiator's stats. First, they each have a speed stat. You're gonna add up all those numbers of your gladiators, whoever has the highest total Total determines your initiative, the higher number player will go first. On your turn, you can play one tactic card from your hand, or you may have a tactic ability on a card that's in play already, like on a patron. Then you can take one attack. 
to attack. You exhaust the gladiator in question. They have an attack value, and they will deal that much damage to one target gladiator on the other side. Now, the other player may have a reaction to that attack. Uh, they may have their own reaction ability. They may even have a card in hand with a reaction on it that they can play. And so that may prevent damage or avoid damage or redirect it or have some other kind of effect. Otherwise, the damage will simply go through. And if they take damage exceeding or equal to their current health value, then they are defeated. A defeated gladiator goes back to your discard pile. You also get a coin for it as a consolation prize, and you keep going back and forth this way until both players pass, in which case then you refresh your gladiators and go again and again until one side has all of their gladiators defeated. If you win a fight, you gain all the glory tokens that are there. You need six of those in order to win. And if it's a fleeting glory arena, you get to move the sword on that card to your side meaning you now have access to the ability printed on it, a special ability only you can use. If you win in the Lasting Glory Arena, if you get that card, it goes straight to your villa, and that also has its own unique ability you can use. You also get one of these boast cards, which just water down your deck, unfortunately, so there's a bit of a balance there if you win. Once all the fights are taken care of, you go back to the machinations phase, and so on and so on, until, again, one player has six glory, and they are crowned the winner. So this is a deck building game, but it has this combat phase that certainly shakes things up a little bit. Of course, there are competitive, combative deck building games, but I feel like usually those are kind of baked in. I think it's interesting that in this one, there are two very distinct phases. It's your prep, and then it's your fight. And that definitely does mimic the theme and the, the feeling of actually recruiting gladiators and preparing and then letting loose and going all out with everything that you've built up once you're in the arena. Yeah, we should first mention, by the way, that this is a two-player only game, so it is going to always be head-to-head, -head, no third player and some crazy matchups. But this game for a deck builder really tries to help remove a lot of the randomness. You know, you play most of your cards out permanently-ish, Gladiators will leave your deck and stay in arenas until the combat phase. Usually you're going to play your tactics and reactions into the reserve. So you tend to quickly go through those extra cards and put them off to the side until you need them for that next phase. You know, you might not always have them if you've bought a lot of cards, but odds are you'll have access to the cards you want. The other big thing is that that combat phase really starts to ramp up. You know, that first time it's going to have a really low bloodlust, uh, uh, what would you call it? Threshold. See, threshold. That's the word I'm looking for. So you probably won't have too many gladiators out. But by the end, uh, I think 24 is the cap. You're going to have a lot of gladiators in the arena. So everyone's just going to be going at it with all these cards. And you should yes, get it, those it, cards it, that they bought. <laughs> yeah, it may only be two players, but you could have a lot more gladiators than that going at it in the arena. Yeah, I, I, th one of the things that's very common in deck builders, I mean, it's almost universal to all of them, is your deck eventually getting watered down. And there is a way right off the bat for you to cull cards. There's a card, mm -hmm. a cull card, lets you remove cards from your deck, which is nice. But it's not nearly as much of an issue in this game, as you said, because so many of your cards go into play permanently. Um, so it does feel like you get to use those cards you bought and access them more quickly than in some other games, which is really nice. And I really love the feeling of, I mean, a lot of deck building games have, you'll buy cool cards, but you don't know, sometimes you might just not ever get the chance to see them, especially late game. If the game's about to end and you buy something cool, there's just not enough time for you to draw that from your deck. I don't run into that problem as much in this one, and it ends up, like you said, when you do get to have those big fights, you feel really rewarded for the cards that you've chosen, especially ones you've maybe put off to the side in your reserve. And you can really have some cool, exciting back and forth fights. It's it's much more intricate than simply, my guy has this much health, you have this much defense, they fight, here's what happens. There's With those reactions and things and the special abilities from the cards you've gotten, all kinds of things can happen in those fights that make it very strategic and, and tactical, I guess is the better word for it. Let's also mention another thing that helps cull, so to speak, the uh, randomness that you see in a lot of deck building games is the lineup. You know, usually in a lineup, you shuffle the main deck and you have a main cards. And let's take the DC deck building game, for example. If someone's playing as Batman or something and no equipment cards comes out, that really stinks. In this, if you need gladiators, 
There's the gladiator lineup. You have plenty of gladiators, but want more tactics to trick your opponent in battle? Draw from that one. It's extremely helpful. And along with that cold card, one of the starting cards you have is reset a lineup. They really didn't want to make this feel like you're, you know, you're out in the woods and you just couldn't draw what you need. That is true. It definitely goes a long way in making sure you will not run into that. Uh, yeah, I, I like the three different uh, groupings for you to buy from. Guarantees you'll be able to probably find something that will help you out that you're looking for. And also it eliminates the issue of like, all the gladiators came out on the other player's turn. He bought them, and now I'm stuck with patrons, but I have no gladiators. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that can happen. I think the coins are interesting, too. The fact that you have coins from your cards and physical, which at first maybe seems like, well, what's really the point of it? But the fact that you can bank those coins from turn to turn and you can spend them individually, whereas, say, you have a card that gives you three coins you can't split that up. You have, you're spending it all or nothing on one card. So that that's pretty interesting too, the dynamic between those two. It's the same type of income, but in a way, two different types of income. Right. It, it was very curious at first because when we first read it, we even like, wait, is this, oh, that doesn't make a coin token. That just represents one. So it took a little bit to wrap our heads around that. But let's actually look at the arena phase because I feel like, What's nice is, as you said, it's like you do all the prep, but then when you enter combat, you only worry about combat. It's not drawing cards anymore. You have what you have all the tools you're going to have available usually to you. See what you can go with. And mm -hmm. there are so it, it really is an interesting back and forth because there are cards, for example, that the high initiative that I abused a lot that was when it attacks, it was not suspend, exhaust. Exhaust. <laughs> exhaust. <laughs> uh, playing, been playing so many games. Uh, uh, someone's gladiator, you know? So you're like, oh, I'll do that and take that guy out because he's the stronger one. Then there's also a card that you used on me called Backstab a lot in which you exhaust one of my patrons. And when they're exhausted, they don't exert an influence anymore. So let's say I had four patrons that gave me four influence and gladiators of four cost out. If you backstab, that means I have to take out a gladiator to balance out that influence cost, which becomes a whole nother strategy to plan around. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on uh, in that phase, and the they do the two different phases of the game really do feel very distinct from each other, but they feed into each other very well. They 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 feel like natural things that help each other as opposed to two uh, dissonant sections of two different games. Crits and misses for for glory. Crits. Because most of the cards that you receive are played into permanent locations next to your player board, your deck rarely feels watered down or overloaded with cards that you don't want to play. With the starting deck including the cards that I feel every deck building game needs to have for people to optimize their deck, it really doesn't feel like the randomness of your deck will decide the fate of you winning or losing. The supply cards are laid out into three different piles with three cards showing each time, meaning you'll always have a choice to get the type of card that you're looking for. It's very difficult for you to be locked out by another player or just have bad luck in what's available for you to buy. Once again, randomness has been cut down. You'll never have that feeling of your opponent keeps buying the gladiators before you get a chance to buy any. As the game progresses, the battles that you fight out in the arena phase will become more and more exciting and more epic as players gain more cards. It feels organic and satisfying to see how they develop. Because of the increase of the bloodlust threshold, you'll have more time to build up your gladiators, and because you can reserve your tactics to the side, usually you'll be able to have everything out that you need during the arena phase. Meaning by that last round, it's going to be an all-out battle to see who can get that last glory. Misses. We tended to notice that there can be a really bad snowball effect when it comes to that first round. If one player is able to sweep and win everything in that first round, it's going to be very hard for the other player to come back, not just in glory, but in terms of being careful and not making any mistakes of how they play their cards. Experienced players will develop strategies to combat an opening like that, as things that they can look out for to make sure that they don't get dominated by the other side. But nonetheless, one player getting an early lead like that can make the game feel one-sided. Unlike some other deck building games, most of the cards here are just good. It doesn't seem there's ever an idea of trying to build a specific engine. 
That isn't too bad of a thing. And maybe for some people, this is gonna be a crit, but I enjoy when sometimes I can build a specific strategy around certain cards. And as far as we could tell, there wasn't really a significant way to do that. Most of the cards work well, no matter which other cards they're paired with in your deck, meaning your deck building phase won't have quite as much strategy to it as some other games do. For Glory was a Kickstarter game that was funded fairly successfully, but I don't know how many people are really talking about it right now. It's available for sale as of now through the uh, Spielcraft Games website. And it's one that kind of took me by surprise. You know, the theme is fun. Gladiator games are, are out there. There aren't a ton of them, but they are out there. But this one, from what we've played, I think is definitely my favorite of the bunch. And it's another one of these deck building games that does things differently enough and is is very smart in the ways, as I think we've laid out, that it understands kind of the, the pratfalls deck building games can fall into and avoids them and enhances them uh, very specifically and cleverly. So you don't have to deal with those things. And the arena phase is just a lot of fun. It almost feels like, you know, a deck building game plus a kind of a dueling combat game mashed into one. No, I mean, it's obvious that they really looked at, like, what are the highs and lows of deck building? And, well, as I mentioned earlier in the miss, I didn't really find a way to build, like, the, oh, I'm going to go all superpowers or Spider-Man strategy. You're still going to be able to deal with, you know, find the cards you want to play and use them. You're never going to have feel like I can't buy the cards I need or my deck's not coming because they're not coming out when the arena phase happens. Usually you're going to have them reserved or in an arena. And it feels a little bit, like playing to me, like playing magic, like the arena phase is just, you're going through the main phases between each other. Then you're just going back and forth in combat, which if you enjoy that kind of stuff is going to be really fun because it's not, I do my one attack then I need to wait for my opponent to play his cards and stuff like, no, we're just going to go back and forth now and just duke it out. And you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. So you really get to focus just on deck building than just on combat. It kind of is the experience of a trading card game, uh, but it's just, they, you know, first you build your deck during the game, then you play it. It's right. sort of, sort of is like that. Yeah. Uh, which is, which is cool and fun. Uh, so for glory, it's available now, as, as I said, you can look for it. If you're looking for a different take on a deck builder game, or maybe if you were one of the backers of it originally, or have played it since then, you could let us know in the comments below how you feel about it, what you like about the game. Maybe give us some tips for your best strategies when your opponent wins those first two games. How can you, how can you get out from under that? Have you done it? Uh, I'd really love to know that because I'm sure there are those out there who are much more skilled in the arena than we are both mentally and physically. <laughs> Until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. This has been Roll for Crit. Like this video, subscribe to our channel, and support us on Patreon. That would make us happy. Maybe the next video is the one where Jonathan does a silly dance. <laughs>